Welcome to Daedalus University. I'm Paul Griffin, coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at combinatorics, specifically permutations with repetition. So get out old trusty Richard G. Brown's Advanced Mathematics and open up first to page 583. The idea today is we're going to take a look at a principle and then see if we can apply it to a more difficult question. Again, we want to first understand the basic principles and then see if we can be flexible with our knowledge in applying what we know to a more difficult question, the kind of question that might show up on an exam. So let's get started. Notice page 583 talks a lot about the permutations of the word Canada. <clears throat> well, we know that if we have six letters and we want to arrange them, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six spots, well, we know that we have six choices here, five choices here, four choices for the third spot, and so on. Right, and that would be uh, kind of a normal permutation, right? That would be equivalent to six factorial, right? But Canada presents a problem because, as the page pretty neatly shows, if we say have n and then I'm going to change the color and then A and A here right and then we go and we have a D this is this is just one example of the way you might order it and then we have another A and I'm going to use another color here let's give it the uh, orange so we have an A here and then this funny word nautica ends with ca so this is one way you could arrange those letters right that's one way but the problem is if we you know i've arbitrarily given these a's different colors right so that you could see you could switch them and i won't take the time to write it out again but you could have n yellow a d dark blue a c a and ultimately that's not going to be any different the word is nautica and we won't recognize that the A's have switched places. Why? Because they're the same. There's repetition in our choices. So for Canada, we have a classic repetition. We have three A's. One, two, three. And so what you do is you divide by a three factorial. Now, of course, this is no longer equal. The numerator equals six factorial. And so what we get is 120. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. When you have repetitions, you do a factorial for you know whatever your choices are in the numerator, in this case, 6 factorial, and you have to divide out any repetitions. To be technical, we could even divide out 1 factorials for the C, N, and D, but we're not going to worry about that. Now let's begin to apply this. Look at the example they give us on page 584. That's example 2. I'll go ahead and read it. The grid shows at the right the grid shown at the right represents the streets of a city. A person at point X, here's our point X, I got a little point, is going to walk to point Y, they're going to make it simplified for us, by always traveling south or east. So we do have to either go south or east in this question. There's no going north, no going west. How many routes or routes from X to Y are possible? So we're really concerned with, with uh, method one. Essentially, well, how many blocks do we have to travel? One, two, three, four down. All right, four. We've got to go four south. And then how many this way? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have to go six to the east. So you could think of it as a word. If we went four, one, two, three, four east, and those would all be E, right? Well, then we'd be in this corner here. And then we'd want to go our six blocks. Oh, I did it incorrectly. Let's say we go um, six blocks east first. Uh, I mean to confuse you. So let's say we go this way first. We go all the way east and we end up here. And now we'll go our four blocks south. All right, Paul. Now we have six east, east, and four south. Well, that's one way of doing it. Notice if we rearrange that word, if we do in fact put all of our S's first, we go four south first and get to this point, 
and then we go uh, all the way east six. Well, that's a different way of doing it, but right. If we just reverse these two easts, well, that doesn't really make any difference. So again, we have repetition. And as page 584 makes clear, the solution is, well, we have to travel a total of 10 blocks. So that's our factorial in the numerator. And then we just have to divide out our repetitions. We have four souths. So let's divide that out. And we have six easts. So let's divide that out. And so the total number of routes that, or routes that one can take from point X to point Y, traveling only east and south, is 210. Fair enough. So then you're, you're saying to yourself, I get this, okay. And then you, you uh, sit for your test and you get something more complicated. Perhaps something like we see on page 586, just turn ahead and we're going we're gonna to sort of take a look at both 9A and then 10, the harder one. 9a is actually very similar to what we just did in the example. It says, find the number of possible routes from x to y. Well, let's see. How many, how, many, how many times do we have to go down? We have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've got to go 6 south this time. And again, we're only traveling uh, south and east. That keeps it easy. Okay, and then we're going to go east. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Make sure you count very carefully. So that's east would be eight. We have eight blocks to travel. And south, I should have notated here, we have six blocks to travel. Well, so the simple solution to 9a then is we have 14 total blocks to travel. And we're going to divide that by our repetitions. Again, if it's easier, you could think of it as uh, a, a word. You could think of it as a 14 letter word made up of only S's and E's. So we have 14 factorial. That's how many different words we can form. But then we have to we have to divide out our repetitions. Okay, so divided by 6 factorial, 8 factorial. Now let's read number 10. Number 10 is where things get a little tricky. I'll drop out here so we can see it. Number 10 says to the nearest tenth of a percent what percent of the routes from X to Y pass through P? Hmm. What percent of the routes from X to Y pass through P? Well, to figure that out, we just have to break our permutation up. We have to first travel from X to P. See so, I mean, how many ways we can do that, right? Well, let's see. How many ways can we do that? Well, we have to go down 1, 2, 3, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So that's a total of seven blocks we, we have to travel, seven factorial, divided again by our repetitions, three and four. So we need to do that and go from P to Y. And, and probability, of course, is multiplication. When we want this event and another event to happen, we multiply them. Well, P is the dead center, so we actually have the same thing here. We're going to go down three and over Four. So we have another 7 factorial times 3 factorial, 4 factorial. And that would be all the ways in which we could travel from point X to point Y passing through point P. Well, it also says uh, what percent, you know, to the nearest tenth of a percent, what percent of the routes pass through P. Well, first, Let's go ahead and get an, an, a numeric answer to A, right? Because A, if we're going to do a percent, we want sort of desired outcome, right? This is through P, we'll say. Well, these are our P roots. I'll just say P roots. And these are all roots down here. Well, all roots was the answer to 9A. So you can uh, pull out your calculators and <clears throat> plug in. 14 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 8 factorial. And that's a pretty, pretty sizable number. Our total possible roots is 3,003. All right. Now let's see what happens when we solve for how many roots pass through P. So again, that's 7 factorial, 
And I'm sitting here doing this on my calculator <clears throat> as we speak, divided by 3 factorial. times 7, oh, I'm sorry, times 4 factorial. Let's see what that number is. I'm getting, for that, I'm getting 35. So in other words, this number here in here is 35. Well, remember, we, want, we then have to go from P to Y, so we'll multiply by another 35. And 35 times 35 is 1, 2, 2, 5. So again, our total possible roots was just over 3,000. And to go through P, we have this many choices. So last step, let's just make that a percentage, as the question clearly asked us to do. When we divide by 3,003, and I'm just plugging this into our calculator. I'm getting about 41%. Right. I'm getting, I'm going to round up, it's 40.8. Oh, it said to the nearest tenth. See, got to follow directions. So 40.8% of the routes, of the routes, go through point P. So again, I hope this sort of clarifies how to go about using the principle of permutations with repetition and applying it to a trickier question like number 10 from page 586. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.